All right, this is Rodney James, the rock star Edgar, coming to you live and direct from Starfade Studios in fabulous Las Vegas. And I'm joined by, I was going to say, contender series competitor, but that wouldn't be right. No, no. I'm talking to UFC featherweight, Super Sadiq Yusuf. What's up, brother? Congrats. Thank you. How you doing, man? I'm doing awesome. Other than it's it's hotter than hell, but you would know that because you were just in Las Vegas, right? Man, that's I was when I got over there. I was telling everybody that's a completely different type of heat over there, man. Yeah, I I hate the cold. I never gotten used to the cold ever since I got to this country. But that desert type of heat, that's that's nothing. And I'm African, so trust me, you can take my word for it. <laughs> we have, we have a saying in the army, like when it's really 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 hot outside, you're like damn, it's hot. It's Africa hot. And yeah. uh, bro, the <laughs> desert. I'm from Texas. And I was yeah. I moved out here last year, and I was not ready for this, man. I'm telling you, it gets yeah. it's different. It um it I, sears you. <laughs> so, uh, was this the first time you've been to Las Vegas? No, I've been there a few times, like with um like my trainer partners. Yeah, they've had on there, and then I came to Vegas, but it usually just for, like one or two days. But it's never felt like that before. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been crazy. We've had some weird weather here lately. The last few weeks, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of rain, but you don't get like. You don't get like rain like you do anywhere else, you know, where it rains like all day. It'll rain for like an hour and then it's just yeah. so hot, man, while all that steam just rises up. But anyway, so you've uh you've been to the PI before you came for this yep. last trip? How cool yeah. is that, man? How much time did you spend um in there before the fight? Cuz you had a few days, right? Yeah, I had a few days, but um I didn't go before the fight, but I went there um like far far before. I was supposed to fight initially, I think I think I was supposed to fight in the second week of the Contender Series, but um, Mike Davis asked for more time. I think he wanted more time to cut weight. So when I first came out, I was spent uh, like maybe two or three days at the at the Performance Institute. I've been there a couple of times with Vic too, and I with a couple of other my teammates. That that man, that place is legit, man. It's like it makes it's like a real like NFL type facility. Yeah, man, it's crazy. It gets a little crowded in there during a fight week, and I, I can imagine around the Contender Series time, it probably gets crowded too. Yeah, yeah, they try to give us um like schedules to make sure we don't conflict with each other, mm -hmm. but there's always people walking in and out, in and out constantly. Yeah, yeah, because if you, if you ever go there when there's not a lot of people, you're like, damn, this place is fucking dope, and then when it gets crowded, you're like, shit, this place is small, man. It's super yeah. nice, but it's like, when it's crowded, it's small, but... uh. Shit, so what was it like fighting, because uh, I've been there, I've been at the Ultimate Fighter gym before for Contender Series, mm -hmm. and it's crazy, man, because like, normally when you fight, there's there's a bunch of people, you got walkout music, it's really tense in there. When I was sitting there the first time, I was like, damn, I feel like I'm yeah, about to hey, fight, man. <laughs> like, it's, it's, so, and it's so hot in there. I'll tell you what, man, that right there is like the perfect scenario for what they're looking for. It's is that's like as real as you could get trying to figure out somebody's skills, you know. It's like everybody is is basically sparring, and that's like that's I feel like that actually helped me out a whole lot more because everything's condensed now. There's no like there is a crowd obviously, but that crowd is not going to influence anybody. They're not going to influence the judges, and they're not going to get in the way of what's going on in the fight. Everybody's basically right here watching the fight. You ready? You ready? Go! And then the the speed is like. The speed played a big role into it too. You know, sometimes when when you're fighting, you might not fight until like maybe like eleven at night or something. You're there for maybe five, six hours. We got there two hours later. You're fighting. First fight is gone. Next, next, next is bam, bam, bam. Like you said, no, no music, no nothing. You just go out there and you get to work. So I loved it. Actually, if real fighting was like that, like if the um, pay per view events was like that. That'd be beautiful, but hey, I'll I'll take I'll take walkout music. It's not that bad. Wow, wow! You're one of the few people that's that's had that take. Cause to me, it's like like I said, just it feels so tense in there, man. I, I love I love it, man. Yeah. That's um, y'all came I, out I, hard, man. I I adjust very well to pressure too, though. So like it's like a very like pressure cooking like situation, you know. And like it, it pressure always brings the best out of me. So some, sometimes um, it affects people differently, but that I like that pressure, man. It's like right there. It's like it almost feels as if everybody's just standing around the cage watching you. Yeah, man. No, it is. And like you said, it's almost like a sparring session with like your team surrounding the cage and just the just the raw energy, the sweat. 
and the fact that it's just so in between people yelling, it's super quiet. Like all you're hearing and, is exa- just <laughs> exactly just, that. That part was very strange. Yeah, it's like um in a regular fight because of how many people's in the audience, you can always hear a constant like like a constant roar. But with that little amount of people, it's like dead silence and then punches. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, dead those silence. Punches, man. Punches. I, <laughs> those punches yeah. were just cracking, cracking, lacking every every last <laughs> one of them. The first round was insane. And so uh-huh. I got to say, man, I don't know that anybody's ever won the contract off of a decision, but God damn, you deserved it. Because I don't think if you would have come out in the third round with a sledgehammer, or no, if you would have came out with a chainsaw and finished cutting his left leg off, I don't know if you would have finished him. That guy was fucking tough, man. How, what was going through your mind in the first round? Because I thought for sure he was done. I was like, this man, guy, there's no way. He, he, you kept hitting him, and he didn't stop. In the, in the first round, especially when I landed the first right hand that knocked them far back. I, if you if you go look at my old fights all the way from amateur, like that's all, that's like a constant. People always like fly back when I land an overhand right. When I landed that and, and I didn't finish it, I was like, okay, it's all right. He got out of one. But then when he got up from the left hook and came up with the double leg, I was like, oh man, yeah, this yeah this dude this dude wants it, you know. It's like I. After the fight was over, I knew I had that contract, man. You know, even though I didn't get the finish, I knew for sure everybody could appreciate those, those rounds. Yeah, because you got a standing ovation from Dana White, from Mick Maynard, and, and Sean Shelby at the end of the first, and you did not coast whatsoever, brother. Like you, it was it was straight up. Y'all were fighting. Both of y'all were fighting your hearts out all the way to the end, and that's what they want to see, man. They want to see people that can come in there and bring it. That's what the name of the yeah. game is, a contender series. Yeah, if you if you go back if you go back to watch it, it's like I try my best not to coast. But if you if you see sometimes when I plant on my on my right leg, it it, it was a little funny. Like I kept throwing it the whole night because hey, I me and my coaches go through these scenarios all the time. If there's a place to get hurt, is right now, you know. But every time I, I'll throw that I'll throw that leg. Every time I put it back down, I was like, ah, shit, that shit hurt. Especially, like, throwing the head kicks. I heard it initially on one of those calf kicks, but every time I would throw, like, a head kick and he would block with his elbow or his, um, or his, um, forearm, and I'd bring it back down, it would be a little bit rough to plan off of it, too. So that also played a little bit of part in, um, like, slowing down a little bit in the third, in the second and third, but we still, we still put on a high pace fight. Yeah, well, I mean, what was going through my mind, I was just thinking, like, damn, how tired are these dudes? Because the cardio, First of all, fighting cardio, grappling cardio, boxing, it's all different. Like, MMA cardio is different, man, because once your nerves and you start getting hit and you start hitting somebody, it's way different. And I was like, damn, this dude's got to be so tired, man. But, yeah, now that you mentioned I remember you saying something about the leg. But other than that, you don't look like you got a scratch on you, bro. It's the, it's the African genetics, man. <laughs> they they hide my injuries very well. <laughs> like right now, honestly, this I, you can't see. I, I always tell you I'm too black to get a black eye. But he got me really, really good with a good um right uppercut. He made a good adjustment. I think towards the end of the first round, at first he was trying to bring a knee up the middle, which um Vic. Shout out to Vic, one of my teammates. That's one of the counters he does to me a lot when he when he um wants me to stop throwing overhand rights. He starts bringing his knee up the middle. Mike is a lot, a little bit shorter, so that knee was never reaching. So he changed it into throwing a right uppercut. At least that's what I think he did, or, or it, it just happened by accident. But yeah. I figured he made he made an adjustment and he started looking for the uppercut instead because he threw it about four times. And the first time he threw it, it was money. And it landed right, bam, right there. And all this just turned into, like, blur. But I keep a great poker face, man. You can... (laughs) I know. I know because I didn't even... I thought... I heard it, but I thought it, like, hit your hand or something because... Exactly, yeah. It hits the cage, right? uh huh. When I rewatched the fight, it's like even the commentators didn't give it that much of um, an acknowledgement. But that thing was money like a mug, boy. I'm trying to tell you, everything just went blurry right here. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I got to I gotta fire back. So everything right here, it kind of hurts. And the eye still hurts. But these Nigerian genetics, you know, oh. you, can't, you, can't, you can't see damage. Yeah. They did, actually. You're right, though. At the time, he, he said, yeah, oh, he landed up. Because when they went and showed the replay at the end, they, they did acknowledge it. But I'll tell you. When I saw the replay, I was like, I don't know, man, because uh, uh, Sadiq didn't look like he was he was hurt too much. I think it hit his hand. I don't even know if it landed. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, your poker face is on point. 
And yeah. uh, I must have some of them uh, African genetics too, my man, because last fight I had, I got, <laughs> I got beaten. I got this was the first time I lost, and I got my whole side mm-hmm. of my face was swollen up like this after the fight. My wife was freaking uh, out. She, my wife is a physician, so she was like, "You need to go to the doctor." This is. I'm like, "No, it's <laughs> fine." And then I looked it in the mirror, like, "Oh shit!" And a week <laughs> later. It was gone. My face looked just like this a week later. I'm like, damn, man. I want, like, I wanted to stay a little longer. It's a badge of honor, man. It's, but it wasn't gonna happen. I'll definitely not have this badge of honor because this right. thing's still, still now. Right, right. So <laughs> how, how's the leg though? The the leg the leg is starting to feel a lot better. I they gave me um like a little boot, and now I'm oh. I'm able to put weight on it. So. Hopefully, I don't. They they're not very sure either. They say they think it's fractured, but they need a second X-ray because it was so swollen after the fight. When they did the X-ray, they say like the lines that they're seeing, like they can't really confirm if it's a fracture, but they think it is. So they say after the swelling goes down a little bit, I get a second X-ray and then we'll move from there. From the way it's feeling right now, n- that is not hurting as much anymore. I don't think it's fractured. Maybe it might be. I don't know. I'm not a damn doctor, but <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I'll see how it goes after the second X-ray. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I I talked to Vic on Sunday. You know, we had him on the show, um, just kind of um, watching the fights and just kind of talking about contender series. He told me he was coming out to Vegas to to watch you. So that was the first time that you know that you hit my radar and I was like, well, if if Vic says this guy's the real deal, I got, I got to check this out. I got to tune in. I didn't have time. uh, I've been so busy. I didn't have time to go and uh, lay money down because he also Uh, told me that Nick Newell was going to lose. He said, watch what I tell you. He said, I know this guy Munoz, Nick Newell's not going to beat him. Well, let me tell you, man, hold up this, this cat right here. Hold on. That's my truck. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what? Let me call you back, brother. I'm on a call right now. My is my truck ready? Yes, it is. Hell yeah, that's what's up. Right. You got it all cleaned up for me, bro. Everything's all ready. Yep, started washing everything for you. All right, sounds good, my man. I'll call you back. Okay, cool. All right. Sorry about that. Nah, no problem, man. So, dude, he he said, man, listen, man, I'm telling you, this kid, this kid's badass. So, those those calf kicks, bro. You know, people. They drive me crazy because that lady, I forget her name, that does the interview, she she said something about the leg kicks. And I'm like, no, <laughs> people got to understand, leg kicks are different. Leg They're kicks different. are like to the They're, thigh. They are completely different. The calf kick's kind of a newer phenomenon. Like, you, not newer, but people are starting to do it more. And I just learned like a year ago how to like, so that, that shit hurts, man. So so tell me, man, like what, what was the thought process going into the fight? Like that part of the game but- plan? Man, people ask ask Vic. Vic banned me from doing that move to him in training. <laughs> like, he he's got me. that long ass leg that's out that, right that, out there. Yeah, because the thing is, Vic likes to run after sparring, so he he's always like, "Man, come on, man, don't stop doing that shit, man." Like, blah, blah, blah. he's like, "Bring it up," and then when you when you're about to fight, it'll be easy for you to just bring it back down. So the thing is, I've I've been looking like a um. Dang, like those little crazy homeless people that say the world's about to end, like in the middle of the street. I've been telling people about Catholics for like four <laughs> years, man. I, I, I want to give a big yeah. shout out to um, James Krause and Ben, ben Henderson because they've been doing it for forever before anybody, anybody ever even tried it. But even back then when they were throwing it, they were always saying it's leg kicks. But James Krause and Ben Henderson been throwing that jump to the cat forever, you know. But now people are starting to see how effective it is. All you have to do is get hit with it twice. Cause after the, after the second, like the first one is always that the the thud that makes the muscle um um just like get inflamed, and then the second one, bam! From then on, all you have to do is just like give it a light slap. From there, you can hit with your foot, and they're gonna feel it. Sooner or later, they're gonna give that little hop, and it happens every single fight. Cause the only option is to slide out the way. If you don't slide out the way and you check it, you're going shin for shin, which is a toss of a coin. You know, my shin might be stronger than your shin, but it might not be. Or you're getting, you're eating the calf kick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you pull it up to try to check it like a regular kick, yeah, I mean, you're going to see uh, either you, you might get swept or might, it's still going to hurt. You have to yeah, kind of pretty exactly. much get out of the way. And you exactly. Gotta, it, it is, it's about timing, too. It's crazy you brought up James Krause and that technique because my, my boy here, uh, Tom Galicchio, I don't know if you know him. He was in the UFC. He was on Ultimate Fighter 22 and then again on 25. And that, his last fight in the UFC, he fought James Krause. He's uh, he, he's he's my co-host on this podcast sometimes. But anyway, 
Uh, I just thought that was a trip. Krause is a guy out of uh, out of Vegas. So, well, he's here a lot. I don't know if he's permanently here, but that, that's a guy that you look up to. Well, I that's he's one of the first people I saw use that technique. Like him, him and Ben Henderson, and they they use that technique, but they never really get much um credit for it. You know, I think nobody. I don't know who really gets credit for it, but they're I know for sure they're one of the first two people I've seen like actually use that technique and use it effectively. I think the only people that ever properly analyze that are actually are like fighters, you know, like other fighters know about it. Like you, you talk about it in the gym, you work on it in the gym, but yeah, a lot of people that are commentating on the sport or writing about the sport, they don't really know. Yeah. Cause it's so fast. It's they like, haven't oh, felt it. Yeah. They like, haven't oh, felt oh yeah. It. Oh, that's a leg <laughs> kick. That's a, no, no, no. It's way different. And you can, I mean, you can snap an ankle on, on that, you know? Yeah. And the, the thing also is I, some people also don't go to it because, as you see, you, you, you receive some pain, too. Mm-hmm. But your pain um, could get you, get you through the fight. There's, it, will, it will stop them during the fight, you know? Like this, you could eat it until fight time is over, and then it sucks, like, the next couple of days, you know, you'll be here looking like me. But in the fight, that guy's going to start, um, start moving differently. He's going to change his offense. It's going to affect a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, we certainly saw that with Davis, and and again in the third round, again I thought he was he was going to be finished because he, you literally saw him just like limping on that leg, like he couldn't stay. He had to switch his stance, and then you still managed to get him with it one or two more times after he switched the stance. Yeah, that, I was really man when he switched the stance. I was trying to go all head kick, but every time I threw that head kick, it was, I was feeling it, man. I was feeling it a whole lot, and the the vision was still kind of blurry on my on my right side. But is he's a tough guy, man. You know he's he's never lost before, and I, I see why he's a, he's very durable. Yeah, man, that was crazy. So, um, so man, so you're from Nigeria, and uh, you moved to the United States when? I moved here when I was nine. Okay, and now I've been trying to go back. Um, I try to go back almost every year. Uh, if I could, if I could go back, um, like three times a year, that would be great. But a lot of times I have to focus on training, and whenever I go, it's always like an extended stay. You can't just go to Nigeria for like two days, you know. Right, right, yeah. I mean, that's a long, long trip anyway, too, just to get there. Um, yeah. So they said uh, somebody, I think it was that same girl I was just talking about, had mentioned that after the fight or after you got the contract or whatever, like one of the things that you plan to do is, is bring your family and stuff like that. You're going to get a lawyer so that you can work on the immigration stuff. What is that process like? Because I know it's not easy. It's not as easy as people think. It's not easy at all. It's not at all, man, because um, a couple of like my brothers and sisters, they, they, they make a list and that list, like they might not get to you for like, 10 15 20 years you know and like the best we could and nigeria is like there's a couple of problems right now because the money's not circulating very well and there there there's people there that are willing to work hard but the jobs just the mm-hmm. opportunity is not there that's why i always said when i have enough money i want to get like a real lawyer that knows like the ins and out of this stuff because even though i'm i'm, I'm here i'm kind of like you i'm like man what's the next what else can i do to help the situation like outside of just waiting the 15 20 years that maybe they'll get to one of my brothers or sister's names you know so it's it's a it's a shitty situation but hopefully I somebody if, can help me out. I, I don't know if you know this or, or if this helps or not but like I said, I'm in the Army. I, I joined in 2001, active duty. Um, I got out and got in the reserves. I've been in the reserves since. I've been activated three times. I know a lot, a lot, a lot of African people uh, in the Army. There's a lot of African people in the military, particularly Nigerians. And uh, what a lot of guys that I know ended up doing was they came here when they were like teenagers, maybe with their parents, and then when they go to the army, it's it's really easy for them to get to citizenship, obviously, because anybody who serves in the military in the in the U.S. that's not from here deserves to be a citizen. But you actually don't have to be a citizen to join. So sometimes they'll join and then they'll become a citizen after. So if that's an option, yeah. something to think about. Yeah, mm-hmm. finding a way to actually get them here is the hardest yeah, part, man. No, that's exactly. And, and, for the friends that I know, and it's not just Africa, it's South America. A lot of people from South America do the same thing and, you know, Mexico, Central America. Um, but, yeah, because, I mean, they're already here when they do it, so it's a little bit different. Um, who are some – there's a lot of African fighters in the UFC now and in Bellator. Who are some of the guys that, that you know and look up to? 
Oh man, I look up to the whole African Illuminati, man. <laughs> yeah. Israel Adesanya, Kamara Usman, King Mo, we claim him too. Um, sure. uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Manoa, uh, both the Andrew Kawani and his brother Ch- Chitty. Chitty, yeah. There's a lot, yeah, there's a whole lot of, um, there, it's just like everybody's in like random specs of places, you know? Yeah. But sooner or later, I'm trying to see now there's a big rise of Nigerian people coming up, you know, and yeah. we're slowly making the little Nigerian Avengers and Nigerian Illuminati. We're going <laughs> to we're going we're gonna, to we're going to get our people to shine in there, man. You know, it's like I people think I'm joking, but it's not a joke. Like Africans are built for this, man. You know, know. <laughs> we're, built, we're built for this. It's like a co- combat sport is you could find at Af- athletes just walking through at Nigeria, walking through Africa, doing nothing, you know? Oh man. I one this one Nigerian kid I knew back in the day in the army, like in the early days, like 2002, 2003, we actually went to Iraq together and everything. But, uh, he, this dude was about my size, but he never worked out. Not once. I mean, he was just one of them dudes that all he did was eat jumps. <laughs> Play video games. That's about a million of them. Yeah, and then, <laughs> about a million of them. And you, you know how it is. I mean, you get a bunch of dudes, you get a bunch of army dudes that are in the field. What are we gonna do? We're gonna grapple each other. We're gonna fight. We're gonna do all that just for fun, you know. And like this cat, uh-huh. he. I mean, I was like two hundred pounds, and he, I mean, he could just pick me up right over my head like nothing, man. <laughs> like just straight up, just just scoop me up. Just that, that's why you saw in the in the end of the first round, Davis is like he's strong as shit. I get that. I get that same reaction every single fight, man. It's like every single fight. I've never had a fight where I felt like I was physically overpowered, even in the gym. Until I started touching like one, the seventy, the welterweights, I could, I never feel anybody stronger than me, you know. And I think a lot of that got to do with genetics. Genetics are a real thing. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, man. Uh, so a couple others, and he's also a mutual friend of uh, Vic, a guy out of Dallas. Uh, Razak Judo Thunder Al Hassan. He's from. He's from. Uh huh. Uh, he's he's an African Illuminati too. He's good people, man. He's good people. I just I hit him up yesterday because um, you know I had booked you to uh, to come on here and I and I thank you for your time, and I I was thinking about him I'm like damn because he was supposed to fight in Glendale. He was supposed to fight at UFC Glendale a few months back. So I I hit him up to see what he's been up to. He, he's trying to get back on uh, back on track and get in there soon. And uh, yeah. like you said, Injakani brothers you know, are from Dallas. You know how many times people um, randomly asked me if I, if we was related, or it's like, man, you know who you really look like, man? Or is that? I've never met him before, but people always tell me I look <laughs> like him or act if we're related. <laughs> but hey, it's all good. He's cool shit. He, he's he's got that coming to America accent too. He's like the nicest guy in the world, but he gets in the fucking cage and he's just a killer, bro. We, 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 we all got it. We just hide it a little bit differently. <laughs> Good shit, man. Good shit. And then of course, King Mo, man, I was just, I, I, I saw him in San Jose and unfortunately, you know, he got stopped rather quickly by Bader. That was very unexpected, but uh, he's good people. He's actually from Dallas as well. So him and his brother, a uh, lot, lot of guys, man, like you said, man, a lot of guys coming up, you know, even, uh, uh, and, and Ganu, man, that that guy's a beast. He needs to get back on track after that last performance. But uh, he he he's he's the man, he'll, dude. He'll be all right, man. He got shot to the top very quickly, you know. So that's all that stuff just needs an adjustment. Mental adjustments are easy to fix, man. Yeah, I just I I, I didn't like the way that uh, that Dana White spoke about him, you know, publicly. I think if you you know if you're gonna say things negative, like it's one thing to say it, but man. To do it in public like that and embarrass that guy, like, look, man, the dude he went in there and fought his ass off, even if it wasn't the greatest fight. Let me see you get in there with Derek Lewis, motherfucker. <laughs> Next to the Black Beast. Black Beast is an honorary African. <laughs> we, we claim we claim him too. Straight up, man. I'm telling <laughs> you, man. He, he's yeah, he's good people. Another Texas boy right there. So so Texas, yep. hey Texas on the come up. We got we got James Vick. Uh, we we got my boy. What happened? <laughs> I said Houston, baby. I remember he, after one of the fights, he kept he kept saying that Black Beast is hilarious, man. Did you see what uh Did you see what he posted the other day on uh, Instagram? Some uh, uh, what's that cat's name? That Russian dude was trying to call him out. He's like, yeah, we yeah yeah. Uh, <laughs> he said, "What's a black dude going to do in Russia in, Mo- in Moscow?" He said, "A black yeah, dude in Russia." He's hilarious. Fuck man. that. He said, "Come yeah, over here." He's a <laughs> yes, man. Oh shit. So um. 
So anyway, yeah, man, we, we got another Texas boy on the come up this weekend, man, at UFC Calgary. I'm looking forward to that. One of my uh, old training partners, one of my mentors out of San Antonio, Alex Hernandez, is taking on a Canadian guy up there. Uh, he's actually on the main card. And then you've got, uh, shit, what else? we got Jose Aldo taking on Jeremy Stevens. Uh, the main yeah. event is, uh, oh, that rematch with Dustin Poirier and uh, Eddie, uh, Alvarez. Eddie Alvarez, which... They fought in Dallas. Actually, that that's the first time that I uh, that I connected with Vic. I kind of knew of him because we had trained at some of the same places in Fort Worth, but he fought on that card as well. So anyway, uh, anything you're looking forward to this weekend? A lot of good fights. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good fights. There's a there's another Nigerian fighting this weekend too. I came I came to Wadu's fighting this weekend too. So I I, I I keep an eye out on that all all of my people, you know. So I like to see him do do pretty well. And I, I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy enjoy the fights, man. Uh, I kind of I check out of um, MMA when it gets close to my fight time because it's a little bit um too much because I do so much film studying and stuff like that. I start trying to ease back a little bit. So this weekend I'm gonna have fun um being able to relax and just watch the fights. Hopefully by then I've gotten my X-ray and stuff. I should be getting an appointment in the next couple of days, and I'll see what's next for me. It's well deserved, man. You deserve to. to kick back and uh enjoy the show you put on a great show i can't wait to see you in there again man what's the deal do they uh do they give you like a a four fight deal or one fight deal is it something you're still working out how does that work yeah they just they give you a, um a regular like the regular ufc contract yeah. it's kind of similar to the ultimate fighter contract but it's a it's a regular fight you work your way in and you you win and you shine and you get to renegotiate that joint you know well, one thing we know for sure is that you're going to bring it. It's going to be an exciting fight. You're going to bring that African strength, that African pride, and that warrior yeah, spirit. Man, hey, yeah. I thank you so much for your time, brother. I want to stay in touch, and uh, I appreciate you being on here and look forward to having you on again. No, it, it is my pleasure, man. I, I love talking to people, as you see. You know, sometimes I get accused of talking a little too much, <laughs> so <laughs> it's I'm always free to talk. Yeah, same. Well, hey, uh, any sponsors you want to plug before we uh, get out of here? Uh, right. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to our Air Rosti. It, man, they really helped me out. Um, it's like a rehab place. They're good for healing injuries. So I'm probably going to be giving them a quick visit real soon. And my, my gym over here, Monster Makers, and just uh, everybody that supports me. You know, right now, there's still a lot of room open for new people to get on board. I'm starting to finally get the shine that my hard work deserves, you know. So I like for more people to get on board, get on board with me, get right with me, support me through this fighting career, you know. Well, thanks, man. Uh, you know, thanks again. And uh, look, man, I look forward to it, and I really hope everything works out with, with the family and stuff. Keep me posted on that, man. I'd love to hear how uh, how everybody's doing and how that's going for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. Have a good weekend. You too. Later. All right, if you're still with me, I'm going to – my buddy Alex Hernandez a call here. Stand by. Hmm. What do you think, man? That guy's a pretty cool dude. Pretty cool dude, hell of a fighter. Very uh, gracious of him to, uh, to join MMA Soldier on this Friday and chat with us. And uh, same with Hernandez, man. Look, I know he's got uh, he's got a fight tomorrow, so I'm surprised he even agreed to do this. And you know what? He might not even answer, to tell you the truth. So let's see what happens. Hmm. Might have to. Uh, take a little hiatus and come back to that Alex Hernandez ladies and gentlemen he's uh he's on board for uh between 1 and 1 30 pacific time uh so that's about 5 to 30 minutes from now but if I know Alex it will probably end up being a little bit later than that and again I know he's uh got a lot of obligations going on up there in Calgary so the fact that he's even you know willing to join us on here the day before the fights uh, speaks volumes, so that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we'll come back to it. Stay tuned to MMA Soldier. I am Rodney James. This is 
MMA soldier.